Where's James? Hello, mate. <laughs> Today, we're going to be laying the cable deck floor in. Great system, really good, especially in conditions like, the, well, it's a nice sunny day today, but who knows what's going to happen tomorrow. This is going to be exposed for a little while until we've got our roof on, but with the cable deck system, we can lay the floor and it's fully sealed with a polyurethane glue that expands out of all the joints and it is guaranteed for 42 days uh, of weather and treatment by all the trades and what have you. We've already laid our joists, as you can see. We've got trimmers coming through. We've also got another joist next to it. And the reason we've done that, we've set all of our joists up at 400 millimeter centers so that when we put our cable deck down, all of our end joins will land on a joist. It's not 100% necessary to do it like that because you can put a noggin in if, you, if you're not landing on a joist. But this way, it just makes our life so much easier. And also, it means we're set up for the plasterboard in under, underneath. We're gonna do a quick three, four, five on these uh, joists just to check we're square. Uh, it's great for us in, in our situation. We can set all these joists out exactly as we want them. But if you're in another situation, say you're working on an existing floor where the joists are not set up in that way, they could be imperial, 16 inches, so you're gonna run out. And you do find that um, you've got two ends that come together that are midway between two joists. You have to put some kind of support in there, whether that's a noggin, flat or upright or two or but you need to support it some way you can't just leave it flapping around so what's that 30 that's three, three meters, meters three meters three meters that way four meters along here all these joists have got to be knocked about eight millimetres, we need a big, a big hammer. Is that what you're going to do? Yeah, I don't want to leave it off the wall. No, no, I wouldn't do that. I just wonder whether you need to square them up or not. We checked the joists, we're nice and square, we're good to go. So we're just doing a little dry run on our first row because once that one's in, that governs everything else that happens now. So we've started from that end, we've brought them all the way down and we're left with a little silly bit there, which is not much, much of an issue because we're on a joist. The problem we got is if we cut that little bit off, the bit we then take down to the other end only gives us a very small stagger. I'd rather not stagger just between two joists. I want at least three joists span between staggering. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut 400 millimeters off the first one, shunt it all 400 millimeters that way, which then gives us a bigger cut here and a smaller cut there, which keeps our distances apart because we will have to trim another little bit off to get back to the next choice to keep our 2.4 meters so there's a small amount of wastage in all it's going to be a quicker job so we're saving a lot of time on labor uh, and it's going to be a more solid job as well so according to kvdex instructions we fit our first board in and we put a screw in every joist and then in between every joist on our perimeter noggin and then we put, and there'll be four down one edge, and that's it. And then we only need one on the front edge on every joist. Now, James, that seems to me that that's very good for the glue company, but not so good for the screw company. It does. <laughs> <laughs> Would you use more? I think um, I'm going to go with KVDX recommendations on this, um, and purely because we. It, Currently, it means we're going to be putting less holes in the in the membrane. Yeah. But once we've peeled this back, I think I'm going to go around and put a few more in, just to be sure. I mean, they've told us we don't need to, but belt and braces, eh? Can't harm. A six millimetre bead of this D4 polyurethane. I'm not going to measure it. Do you know what six millimetres looks like? I look at it every day. That's <laughs> <laughs> seven. <laughs> You'd know, mate. You would know, wouldn't you? Of course, it really doesn't matter that the joists are wet, does it? No, because it cures underwater exactly the same way as expanding foam. Spray a bit of water on it before and after you use expanding foam effect. And it uh, helps it stop expanding and starts the curing process a bit quicker. So I better hurry up, actually, if it's wet. <laughs> they sink in lovely, don't they? Yeah, very nice. Quite nice having a flooring screw with a Torx head on it. Torx are becoming a lot more popular and they're really good. They just don't, you don't slip out hardly as much as you do with Posi or Phillips. Forge Fix have got quite a good range now of, um, of these screws. I'm not saying they're nobody else's, but 
they've got a bit of something for everyone in all different types styles of head um, so, you know sp specifically these ones are for chipboard uh, and MDF flooring um, and they do drive in really nice they're really good um, but they, we've got all sorts um, that they do yeah. so, some specialists for softwood with a different head on it anti-split the ones with the tiny little heads they're great we've actually used some with the tiny little heads we did a pallet wall um, and I bought the the forge fix it's like a lost head screw so it's got a tiny tiny little uh, torx head on it and when you screwed through uh, the pallet into the baton on the back it's just it's literally like a pinhead oh they're so nice what we want to happen is when the two ends go together we want all of that glue to be foaming right out of that joint to make it watertight Yeah, but I they think so you'll you can, find it expands out. You can fill in the gaps. So we've slightly deviated from the way that um, that Norboard show in their in installation video. So what they basically show is you put your board in, you fix along this front edge, then you glue your joists up, glue your tongue groove up, put your next board in, and fix along that edge. The problem we're having, and that you'll find with probably any floor is that not all of these joists are going to be 100% flat there'll be a little undulation one might have a slight dip in it one might be slightly higher so once we fix that down there and there and there you then create a slight wave effect and the problem we were having is that that the next board is not sitting nice and neatly into it so what we're doing now is leaving out that front row of screws then getting our next board glued up and fitted, then we're putting it in afterwards. Yeah. It just makes it a lot neater, there's a lot less whacking around with blocks, a lot less chance of breaking tongues and the lipid on the edge. That's all right, that's fine. Follow the noggin. Too many balls up here now. <laughs> right in the mush. Is that the last of the glue? I think it's because the, the nozzle's so big on it, it runs out quite quickly. It's in with his seven millimetre nozzle. I said it was supposed to be six. Yeah, you've got to check where he's bought shares in the glue company, though. <laughs> <laughs> So what have you got left to do after you've put down the last ones of these then? Right, we've got to go around the edges with a paintbrush and some glue, paint all the edges up so that seals any water that's going to seep over the edge, it's not going to get in the end grain. So we've got to go around checking all of our joints, if any gaps where none have come through we've got to fill a bit in and on top of that we've got to go around every screw hole, squirt a little bit of glue in all of those because that seals that up. and. Go home. <laughs> That's it. Another hour, to, another hour. Yeah, yeah, I think we we'd be good. Okay, it's great though. Good days work. Yeah, and it's, it looks nice. nice as well. Lovely. It's nice. Nice. I like seeing all that glue foaming up out the joints. You know, you've got a definite quality bond there. Yeah, yeah. 
That's what we call a generous bead, Ian. <laughs> you started off a bit frugally, didn't you, here this morning? <laughs> yeah. With the glue. I was panicking about running out of glue. Yeah, yeah. Now you've seen there's so many bottles of it, you can't wait <laughs> yeah. to use it up. Oh, blimey, you could have got the right in, right? In the uh, installation video, it actually shows the chap using the bottle and squirting a bit onto the um, onto the brush itself and then brushing it on. But we found you cut the pot open, there's quite a bit of stuff left in the bottom. You probably could squeeze it all out, but the speed that we needed to work to keep a wet edge all the time, we didn't have time to make sure every last drop was out. So this works good and we know we're getting 100% of everything out of the, the pot, which is always quite satisfying. Don't paint in the dark, I told you that on the Dulux video. <laughs> Your painting looked like it was done in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> because it's only a 10mm gap, it's a bit difficult getting a brush down there and knowing if you've sealed it properly. We painted that edge before we laid it. Got it. Um, obviously these ones are still in the cavity of the block where it's got to come up so we can get to it, but anywhere we can't get to, which is not that many. Thankfully. No, no jigsaw in the whole thing. Oh, thankfully.